at home soil tests. Are they accurate? Let's find out. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I do an at home soil test using one of these kits. And later we're gonna compare the results and accuracy next to a lab test. So let's get started. Hi, I'm Christina with Forever Food Forest, a channel where I explore ways of growing food without the use of herbicides, pesticides, or commercial fertilizers. And instead, I rely on natural gardening and permaculture gardening techniques to grow food that's good for the garden and good for the planet. So let's get started. A forest is not complete without trees. Right here I have an avocado, a fig, and some blueberries. These are ready to go in the ground. But before I plant them, I'm gonna do a soil test to determine the best site for them and whether I need to add any amendments or change the pH, which I'm pretty sure for these blueberries, I will need to. Blueberries require a soil pH of about 4.0 to 5.5. It's very acidic. And if the pH is too alkaline, they are not able to take up magnesium and iron and the iron deficiency shows up and looks like yellow leaves that uh, lack the chlorophyll because magnesium helps make chlorophyll. A soil test is like a doctor's visit for your garden. It can help you diagnose any problems or just find out where your soil stands in terms of nutrients and pH. So I want this area to be kind of like an orchard and I have a bunch of mulch down. I'm gonna plant some starter trees. I have a fig tree over there, an avocado tree that's gonna go somewhere over here. But before I do any of that, I'm gonna do a soil test. And to get a little good soil sample, I'm going to just scrape the mulch and then dig down about 18 inches uh, and collect the sample from 15 different areas. And the reason that I wanna do that is because I want to get an average of this whole area. This is known as a composite sample and it's a lot more cost effective than doing a test on each spot individually. So instead of doing 15 different tests, I take 15 samples, combine them into one, and take a small sample out of that for testing. My test is only as good as my sample, so I make sure to extract an even amount of soil while moving my trowel along the side, and then I put that in a bucket, then take all those samples, mix them together, and let the soil dry out. So right here I have my soil samples, and now I'm just gonna prepare the soil test to be sent off to the lab. And that's about half a pint. Just seal these up, get a box and ship them off to get tested. So while we wait for the lab results, let's do the at-home soil test. I'm gonna mix my soil, one part soil, with five parts purified water. Purified water is recommended because tap water may or may not have some minerals already dissolved in it, and that would affect the results. Oh yeah, this one's chunky. And then I just let it sit for about 24 hours until all the solids have sunk to the bottom. Look at that color. Now I use the handy dandy pipette to extract the water and not any of the solids and fill the testing chambers. I wanna fill both sides of the testing chamber because the water, as you can see, has a tint. And if the other chamber is left blank, then that tint could skew the test results. So in order to be very scientific and accurate, we're gonna fill both chambers fully and then I'm going to add the reactor pills. This at-home kit tests for the major macronutrients, potassium, nitrogen, and phosphorus, as well as the pH. Now, do I first take the red pill or the blue pill? I'm gonna keep it scientific. It's actually more of an orange pill, isn't it? So I just twist open the capsule and empty out the powder into the testing chamber, making sure that every last drop of the powder is out. Then I seal it and give it a good shake to make sure that it all mixes around. And after that, I leave it alone for 10 minutes. It's very important to leave it alone for 10 minutes to let the color develop. And while the potassium test is developing, I'm gonna start the nitrogen and the phosphorus test as well. Here in Florida, our sandy soils and daily monsoon style rains over the summer 
cause all of these nutrients to wash out of our soils. So that's another reason why I'm doing this test is to see where my soil stands in terms of nutrients. Even if there were nutrients in it last year, if I didn't put down any organic matter, all of that stuff would have washed away by fall. And with the magic of editing, it looks like 10 minutes have passed. Is this one potassium? Oh, it's very clear there's a bunch of potassium. But is it accurate? Well, guess what? I got the lab results right here and we're about to find out. The lab results for potassium came back high. Pretty good. I would say that's more than adequate. Let's check our nitrogen levels. It looks adequate at best, but let's see what the lab says. The lab says we do not test soil for nitrogen as there's no meaningful soil test for predicting nitrogen availability. Well, there you go. The phosphorus test took a little bit longer to develop, so I went outside in order to get a good reading. And when you're trying to get a reading, it's very important that your test is not backlit. You want it to be frontlit and preferably with a bright background. That makes it much easier to read. So right here, it looks like it's adequate, but I wanna say it's surplus. Let's see what the lab says. The lab says Willie Nelson, blue eyes crying in the rain, it's high. And now it's time for the test where I find out whether my soil is alkaline, acidic, or pregnant. Wait, what? For the pH test, I take a small sample of soil and add it into the testing chamber. I add the water, then the capsule, mix it all together, and let's see what we got. Shake, 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 shake. Okay, and then we just leave it to develop. Check it out. This is like a 5.5. That's pretty acidic. We had some thinking to do. But once again, this is not conclusive. We still need to see what the lab says. And the test results are in, and it looks like you are not the father. These are the wrong test results. All right, <laughs> let's get serious. According to the lab test, the pH of the soil is 6.1. I mean, if you squint, that shade of orange could fall into the 6.0 category. These results are very open to interpretation and depend on how colorblind you are. In light of these test results, it looks like I might have to find another site for my blueberries or at least prepare one with more acidic soil. But that's a topic for another video. As far as the test results go, uh, the at-home soil test, I would say it's pretty accurate. It does leave some of the results for interpretation, but what I found is you can't always go by the match of the color. You have to go by the intensity of the color. So the more saturated the color, the more of the nutrient that you have in your soil. Uh, sometimes if you're having trouble with the activator dissolving, it helps to add a little bit of alcohol and that helps it dissolve and gives you clearer results. As far as the lab test, even though they did not test for nitrogen levels, they did do a test for uh, micronutrients such as calcium, magnesium, and sulfur, plus a bunch of other ones. So that was a nice tool to have and a nice diagnosis to have in my toolbox. So now that we have all of that out of the way, I think it's time to dig a hole and plant my first avocado. Hey buddy, what you doing? Hey guy, hey cutie, hi. It's my little helper. He helps me dig holes. So now that I have the results of my soil test, I can feel confident planting this avocado tree in the ground. In you go. And there it is. It's so much smaller now that it's in the ground. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was informative and until next time, bye-bye.
You're quite skilled, Rakokuni.